London, 1888. A city divided between rich and poor. This is Whitechapel, a place of depravity where cats were covered in sick, men were smoking, and one of Britain's worst killers was haunting the streets. This was the hunting ground of Jack the Ripper. My name is Suzanne Primate, and I've been fascinated by Jack the Ripper ever since I saw a big scary hat aged four. I don't have a degree in criminology. I don't have a degree in forensics. I don't have a degree in history. But what I do have is millions of dollars to waste on my morbid fascination. Oh, hello, darling. Didn't see you there. Fancy a bit of it. That's what Mary Ann Nichols might have said the night she died. Mary was a lady of the night, a person of the streets, a pal of the pavements, a citizen of the cobbles. And her life, just like all Ripper's victims' lives, was fascinating. But let's not focus on her. Let's focus on the scary guy who makes us money. We can only imagine the horror. Early morning commuters making their way to the soot factory or the coal museum, coming across a truly horrific crime scene. But just who was Jack the Ripper? The truth is we'll never know. He could have been anyone. He could be your mum, your dad, your brother, your weird cousin who loves knives. It's all lost to time, like a plastic bag in a canal. We don't know anything about him. We don't know how big his shoes were. We don't know if he'd ever been in a hot air balloon. The truth is that Jack the Ripper will remain an enigma.